maybe watch what the person is doing. Um, you can learn that way, of course, but um, part of this mentoring is for you to ask questions. Um, and so I highly advise that you do, if you have any, or post them in the chat and be as interactive as, uh, as possible. And uh, believe me, it will accelerate, you know, your learning. So uh, again, a uh, warm welcome to you guys and uh, I'm here to help you. So, um, right. Wednesday, the 3rd of July and getting into really this, the, the fundamental side of things. And uh, looking at the, uh, the US dollar. So US dollar at the moment. <clears throat> for me, I mean, there was some news that came out, uh, I think it was ISM, and I think there was um, jobs as well, I think, no, it was uh, ADP, I think it was, um, that came out, and um, it hasn't been great for the dollar, the dollar is actually uh, selling off at the moment, and um, pretty much the future central bank uh, policy at the moment um, is that lower PCE inflation last week uh, increases the probability of a September rate cut and non-farm payrolls, wages and unemployment releases this week. Uh, and so Fed still expected to cut later than several central banks. So I had originally put this as um, as uh, an auction. And an auction um, is basically just saying that you can look for buys or sells. So whenever I say um, that something is a bit more of an auction. What I'm saying is, is that can you guys see my drawing tool? Can you see my pen tool on the uh, on the chart? Yeah, no. If you can see my pen tool, yep, excellent, right. So what I mean by an auction is that the market is an auction, right? And in terms of the forex market, and all markets are auctions are basically buyers and sellers. And what we have is either an expensive area, right, a cheap or bargain area, premiums and discounts, and then you have what's known as fair value but this is what's known as an auction where you have you know more 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 uh, more sellers than buyers at, at this area here you know you're going to obviously get more supply and if you have more buyers than sellers here you're going to get more demand and so um when i say auction i mean that there's reasons to be a buyer or a seller at highs or lows and um, if I say auction buy, for example, I don't necessarily expect the market to trend massively. Um, uh, but basically, I mean, just it would probably stay in this type of auction uh, type of move. It might, you know, do something like this, for example, where you do get, you know, a bit more of a trend channel, if you want to call it that. But ultimately, what you're looking to do is buy on those types of pullbacks, even if it goes, you know, below there, still looking at buyers, right? So I might say auction buy, auction sell, where I'm just looking for sell trades. And if I'm thinking that this is going to, you know, trend, then I'll say trend. But, um, but ultimately, uh, I think now actually might be the trigger for, um, the the dollar to start looking a little bit more like a sell and um again with the closer we get to uh the likelihood that we are looking to or oh, the market is looking to price in um a rate cut in september which when you think about it is only probably maybe around about uh two months away two to three months away um the market will start to price in a rate cut and especially if the data is supporting more of a rate cut. So uh, the latest Bloomberg kind of quote is that the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of underlying inflation decelerated in May, bolstering the case for lower interest rates this year. The report offers welcome news for the Fed's officials seeking to commence with rate cuts in the coming months. So remember that the Federal Reserve, and it says, it says welcome news, and it's because the central bank's uh, uh, interest rate target is really, um, oh, sorry, inflation target is 2%. And so the closer we get to 2% is, you know, the, the more it's going to be, you know, uh, welcome, uh, welcome news. It says here, though, policymakers will likely want to see additional reports like this one first. They recently dialed back their projections for rate cuts this year following worse than expected inflation data in the first quarter so yes although they are um you know uh they were hawkish in terms of the, you know they're at their last meeting um at the moment it doesn't look like data is support well the data is supporting rate cuts in in september and what we can do as well is go to the fed 
CME uh, FedWatch tool. And if we look at September, right, uh, we're seeing today an increase, right, in um, in the chances of an ease. And so uh, I'll just zoom in a little bit. One sec. Uh, yeah, zoom in a bit so you can see this. And so you'll see here, um, you know, a day ago, it was a 31% chance of a hold. A week ago, it's 37%, and a month ago, it's 40%. So you're seeing here in real time the uh, the gradual lowering in the probability of um, of a rate hold, which is basically uh, what, what is currently happening, and now the increase of the chances of a uh, 25 basis points or 0.25% uh, rate cut, right? So that's increased today, Um uh, at sixty eight point one percent. Who is uh, who is uh, discussion, discussion, discussion? Whoever this is. Oh, okay. Um, one sec. I don't think Shady's in in the room. Uh, the call has started. Um. Yeah. So. So. Pretty much, this is the reason why the dollar is selling off. So, today's data, um, today's data wasn't good. Going to the United States channel, you're right, shady. Um, so we had the uh, U.S. services activity contracts at the fastest pace in four years. So the U.S. services sector contracted in June at the fastest pace in four years due to sharp pullback in business activity and declining orders. The Institute of Supply Management composite gauge of services slumped five points to 48.8, um, sorry. Readings below 50 indicate contraction and the June figure was far weaker than all forecasts in a Bloomberg survey of economists. And the figures represent an abrupt and marked reversal from the prior month when the overall measure rallied to a nine month high. The June deterioration in the services gauge that covers the largest part of the economy also adds to, to evidence the economy is showing more signs of running out of steam. So what you what for the for the Fed to um to to cut rates, what they really want to see is not only inflation come down, right, but measures of inflation come down. So a contracting economy, yeah, a contracting economy is normally a sign of um inflation coming down, right? And so um, that's basically a great sign for inflation coming down, right? And so we also had here as well, recurring applications for jobless benefits rose for the ninth straight week in the longest stretch since 2018, indicating a growing number of people having difficulty finding a new job. So, you know, jobs... <clears throat> You know, there's 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 issues starting to um, uh, come in when it comes to uh, unemployment and employment. So continuing claims, a proxy for the number of people receiving benefits, increased to 1.86 million in the week uh, ended June 22nd, the highest since November 2021, according to Labor Department data released Wednesday. First time claimants rose by 4,000 to 238,000 last week. So, you know, in in the uh, in the jobs department, in the in the economy department. Um, it's not looking good, right? And that's the reason why you're seeing the uh, the dollar start to uh, look like it was selling off. And the dollar was actually quite on the expensive side anyway. So if you were anticipating um, some dollar weakness, by the way, um, and this is the dollar index, <clears throat> the equally weighted dollar index that we use. If Again, if you're new, um, you know, Steve and uh, Savant, if you are new, um, I know you probably haven't gone through the whole uh, this uh, the course just yet because there's loads to go through. But um, the uh, the the indexes, the currency indexes that we use, and the explanation really around why we use these is in the um, currency index channel right here. So if you click on that that will uh, basically explain and give you the calculations as to reasons why we use uh you know the uh, these currency indexes equally weighted rather than something like the uh, the DXY or the USDX so 
we've been seeing really um, the, the, the dollar index had come up to this supply zone here and it was getting quite expensive anyway. We were a bit on the uh, um, on the premium side of the um, of the RSI, uh, you know, yesterday and uh, into the last three days. So, you know, it was basically going to be tricky. I mean, the edge was really to the downside. To, you don't really want to buy at highs anyway. So pull back. I say it pull back, but basically the move uh, to the downside is driven by um, you know the data at the moment, and again the increase in the probability of a potential rate cut in September. So that's what the market is pricing in. So this is not just a move that is you know basically just profit taking. It's actually you know there's a reason why prices are going to the downside. So um, for now, for me, the dollar, um, I'm a bit hesitant. I think I'm still going to wait for Friday's non-farm news uh, for me to really make a, a, a confirmed decision. But I understand if you are looking at sells on the dollar and you're waiting for a pullback, brilliant. Um, but for me, I'll wait for more of a little bit more of a pullback on that Um or, or I should say the pullback, but um, I'll wait for Friday's um, non-farm payroll data and then I will make, uh, you know, my decision and it'll probably be likely to be a sell. But um, if you do want to go short on that dollar right now, um, it does make uh, it does make sense. So definitely you should be profit taking on that dollar for now if you are in any dollar long trades. So the dollar, I'm still going to leave it as an auction, but I'm waiting for Friday's data. And then what I'll do is I'll update this. Um, and depending on what happens, because we could have another blowout um, non-farm you know, data, and that really would um, support uh, dollar buys. But let's see. Um, the New Zealand dollar, right? New Zealand dollar, um, still my, my, my bias is really based on uh, a buy bias, based on a, a late rate cut. They are, uh, the RBNZ are still um, looking to hold. I mean, there has been a little bit of a shift in sentiment. Um, I think there was some sentiment data that came out earlier um, this week, uh, but I don't think it really kind of affects or affected the um, the RBNZ's thinking on whether they were going to cut rates this year. They're still projected to cut rates next year. Um, and uh, it says here that inflation data shows stubbornness and remains too high. Therefore, RBNZ is likely to hold rates for longer. The economy went into surprise recession, um, but actually came out of that matter of fact. Came out of the recession and no cuts expected this year. And it says despite the GDP result, um, which is basically to exit a recession, um, which matched the RBNZ's forecast, the economy has only grown in two of the past six quarters. The central bank nevertheless signaled last month that it didn't intend to lower rates until the second half of 2025, citing stubborn court inflation. Today's release doesn't change the fact that economic momentum is anemic, particularly from domestic demand and per capita perspectives, says Miles Workman, senior economist ANZ Bank in Wellington. We remain comfortable with our OCR call for cuts from February 2025. Let me just delete that economy came out of it for longer. Uh, no cuts expected this year. Also, as well, um, if you go to the the uh, New Zealand channel, uh, there was something interesting uh, in with the New Zealand dollar, which was I think it was uh, institutions investors. Uh, basically, it says here that bets, and this was the 2nd of July, bets by global investors on a New Zealand dollar rally reached their highest in more than two years on expectations that the nation's central bank will be among the last to cut rates. Yeah, so hedge funds net long positions for the Kiwi rose 12,563 contracts in the week ending the June the 25th. Um, the highest since December 2021, according to the CFTC data. Meanwhile, asset managers jumped to their most bullish outlook on the currency since January 2021 after flipping from a net short position earlier last month. So it sounds very, very positive for the New Zealand dollar, right? And it basically just matches what we've been saying, right? It's, it matches what we've been saying in terms of interest rates and why investors buy and sell uh, or go long and go short um, currencies over the obviously the medium to long term right so 
if anything, we knew if everyone in in the group has has been buying or at least looking to buy the uh, uh, the uh, New Zealand dollar for a while now. But then you're now starting to see that start to come through with CFTC, which lags and not all you know lagging data is is negative but at the same time they're looking at the same things that we're looking at or we're looking at the same things they're looking at it's just that when they're positioning obviously they the, the way that the reports come out they would have been you know long for maybe a while now but ultimately if you watch the fundamentals you should be on the right side of the market and in alignment with the big investors anyway um so there we are with uh the new zealand dollar and um, it says here as well from MUFG that the New Zealand dollar is stronger, but downside risks initially. So in the short term, there could be some downside risks, but ultimately um, they should it should get stronger. So um, the New Zealand dollar um, uh, came down actually to a really nice demand zone, had the confluence of um, of. Um, the RSI being in a nice discount area as well. And so, yep, managed to buy the uh, New Zealand dollar around here. Going long strongly since 28th of May. Yeah, um, 28th of May, bloody hell. That's been, a, that's been a while. Yeah, 28th of May. Yeah, so, well, we'd probably say maybe a bit earlier from there. The low, if you managed to pick the low, was probably, yeah, maybe the 1st of May. So, yeah. It has been, hasn't it? Yeah. So it just do a bit of a pullback. Um, and um, and yeah, so basically it was a decent pullback. Um, you know what? I actually ended up getting stopped out for the rest of my two positions. I, I made um, one position on the New Zealand CAD, but ended up getting stopped out on the last two by around about two pips. So that was, um, that was basically a, a break-even trade, matter of fact, on that one. Um, and the, I, I posted the, um, the Euro New Zealand trade as well. And if you managed to get in on that and at least, uh, you should have got in on two positions, but I'll break down that, I'll break down that trade a bit later on anyway. So the Euro New Zealand, so that should be, it should be in some profit on that one. But ultimately, the New Zealand dollar was was a decent buy. I think it was the only buy that I could see this week because everything else was pretty expensive. So um, New Zealand dollar, nice trade, and hopefully it can continue moving to the upside. Um, so let's see what happens with that. So continued buys for the New Zealand, so auction, but buy bias based on late rate cuts. Uh, Japanese yen basically sell bias on um on rate differentials carry trade this has been it's been like this for the past um maybe month or so and um yeah i can't see anything changing for now uh, for the japanese yen um even though they uh, are looking to or well, there's the potential um for them to high rates um shady is it's 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 difficult to, to buy the yen at the moment because I actually I'll go into it right so I did read here that the Japanese yen um here it was it was basically it could, it could go to 170s right so it was saying here that Vanguard sees the yen at risk of falling towards 170 per dollar if potential bank of Japan policy changes this month failed to boost the country's bond yields. And so it says here that if at the July meeting they come down to only 5.5 trillion yen or even 5 trillion yen per month of JGB buying, uh, Japanese uh, bond buying, uh, markets may push the dollar yen towards 170. And I think we're at 162s at the moment. So if anything, that's another 800 pips or so you know what i mean so if it could go to that that level potentially then i'm not looking to buy uh the yen uh not at all not even against the swiss franc i'm not even it's there's so many well, i say so many but there are other there are other trades to to look out for and i think I'd, I'd really have to see i think for me to buy the yen now i think other central banks will have to be in their uh, cutting cycle so especially the Federal Reserve so I think the Fed are going to have to cut in September and then I'm going to have to then maybe just adjust to see where um, 
where what the yen is doing. Also, as well, they didn't have great news. They didn't have great news um, with, I think it was the, the revision of their GDP. So, yeah, it says here that it says two economists flipped their forecast for Japan's economy to show a contraction in 2024, a day after first quarter gross domestic product data were revised sharply lower, highlighting the Bank of Japan's quandary as it weighs the case for a rate hike. So it says here, um, in addition to fresh signs of economic weakness, um, uh, Ueda and his board will have to weigh up risks to inflation as the yen is uh, has continued to slide. The currency hit a fresh 38-year low uh, this week, and some economists see the danger of further depreciation. Uh, the Bank of Japan leaves its policy rate unchanged at uh, on the 31st of July and there was also some other data there, this was it as well sorry it says here that this is a quote uh, and it says here if we see intervention that is not accompanied by significant rate hikes or the promise of rate hikes and quantitative tightening that's just a buying opportunity for us um, this is the same uh, Mr Kootenay I think it is how you pronounce his name so from Vanguard so basically what that what that saying is is that the uh, the yen right the yen um even though they may they may intervene right if it's not a sustainable if they come out with policy that the market just thinks is just more you know more dovish more dovishness even if they intervene they're just going to say we're just going to look to short it wherever it may wherever it may you know appreciate too so um for now i think it's a case of not trying to anticipate what the policy is going to do is going to be with the uh and what the bank of japan is going to do with their policies and buying you know bonds and rate hikes rate um rate hikes i think it's just a case of now waiting until after they announce it and then positioning yourself because at the end of the day it's um it's been tricky as we know <laughs> very tricky to to time the uh the appreciation of the yen so i'm not bothering anymore i'm just looking at it as any any more pullbacks on the yen are just going to be more uh, shorting opportunities. Um, Mark says, I've seen it before with the yen when it does uh, finally turn bullish, the short squeeze is going to be huge. So it would uh, be good to catch it, but it'd be hard to catch it. Absolutely. I mean, the upside potential is, is going to be big, but again, how many times are you going to, um, are you going to attempt to, 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 to do that? But also as well, I wouldn't expect the yen to just continue to go higher and higher and higher with no pullback, right? There's gonna, there's definitely gonna be at least some decent pullback within that rally higher. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just not gonna um, even bother with the uh, yen and trying to go long on the yen. Any pullbacks, as long as there's no intervention, um, and there shouldn't be if it pulls back, then I just look for more short trades. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So for now, the yen is. Uh, is a short um british pounds so the pound was has been light this week on on news and so nothing's really changed that i can see you know august cut is still likely short term price driven by election results right so the election our our election results in the uk um are going to be pretty much uh this friday i think 4th of july is yeah tomorrow basically um is going to be the uh where, we, where we're voting and so um the market expect labor to have the majority which is seen as a positive for the pound because that's seen as um having a stable government right and if you have a stable government the like the market likes uh stability but um but also as well um there is a chance, in fact, that the UK may not um, hike, sorry, sorry, cut in, in August because it says core inflation and services is still running too hot for this to be sustained. Although, of course, there is a, it said uh, at the time, there's about a 60% chance of an expectation that, that Bank of England will cut. But um, I think for now, the pound should be a, uh, a buy on pullbacks but of course with the pound uh, it is in the expensive area right so you, if you do want to be a buyer of the pound um, you're not really you don't really want to buy at highs you have to wait for some decent pullback 
um, into some sort of demand zone before getting um, before getting long. So let's see what happens after the election. Of course, if you get a pullback, I do think that that should be a decent buy. But um, just be cautious as well as we go into or get closer to the um, uh, to the, uh, the the rate cuts. So um, or potential rate cuts. But uh, yeah, I think I think for now any pullback should be buying opportunities. Um, but then even then, even if you're buying um, uh, the pound, I would definitely say, oh, actually, I would, don't know, now that I'm thinking about it, the pound may, um, all right, so I think the closer we get, the closer we get to, the election, um, the election, the uh, the rate cuts. I think the pound may start to actually start to sell off. So, if anything, if anything, I do think that we are in maybe the auction phase in terms of you can find reasons to buy or you can find reasons to sell, and that's why I'll leave it at at auction on here. I'm not going to say you know auction buy or any or auction sell, but I do think probably. Um, the, the the pound may have run its course in the short term as we head into those uh, uh, rate cuts. So I think, in fact, if I'm leaning towards anything, it might actually be towards a sell. Yeah, I think it might be towards a sell as it goes. Now that I'm thinking about it. So yeah, um, yep, yeah, we're in the uh, RSI extreme as well. So technicals are definitely pointing to the downside so i do think in fact i would probably wait until after the elections before um uh starting to get short not before because i think there's probably going to be some volatility on the results but then after the election i think that that would be out of the way um yeah they're probably gaining your right spencer they're probably um gaining on dollar weakness but ultimately um i do think that the pound you know, has to price in a rate cut to some degree. Yeah, exactly. And you don't know how long it will last. Yeah, yeah. Could last for a little bit, but all central banks are going to be cutting pretty much um, going into August, September anyway, or they should be. So I think we'll definitely get more of a, again, more of an auction type of uh, uh, market, right, where we just start to move. We've already been moving, you know, sideways already, auctioning from, you know, from here, doing this, right? So I think that type of price movement is likely to continue into into the future. So yeah, I think the upside is probably limited. Zooming out a bit more, uh, we haven't seen these highs since probably what's this now twenty since Brexit. Yeah, so it's been a long time. Uh, so yeah, I think maybe there is some downside potential on that pound. But again, if even, even if you do get a pullback, you can also look for put maybe some buys here or maybe some buys down there. Um, yeah, and also as well, it does it. There is there is the how many cuts um, scenario. So let's say for example, the pound and the Bank of England are cutting rates, right? Um, if they're seen as cutting less than, for example, Europe or the US then the pound is still likely to be a buy, yeah? So let's say, for example, I don't know, the Euro Europe, the ECB are going to be cutting, let's say, twice, or they're expected to, but the Bank of England are expected to cut once. Then you still want to buy the pound over um, the, uh, the, 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 the over Europe. Uh, the BOE just can't be as hawkish uh, just looking at the data. I mean, the data's all right, to be fair. You know, the data's all right. If we go to the... the, the um, the uh the spreadsheet you know what i mean they're still they're third basically you know what i mean all things considering so in comparison they're not they're not you know they're not that bad do you know what i mean so uh not bad at all so outside of the united states australia yeah united kingdom and 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 new zealand i still think they're in terms of you know uh their data should be decent but again i think it's going to be more dependent upon um interest rate expectations as it always is right but yeah but there are reasons to sell and there are definitely reasons to buy so i'll keep it i'll keep it as an auction at the moment 
Europe. So, um, Europe, nothing for me, nothing has changed. I definitely have a sell bias on the euro, although, of course, we've seen today, uh, and this week, matter of fact, over the past uh, week, couple of weeks, the euro has rallied. Now, I personally believe that they're just basically getting rid of all the shorts. Um, you know, because of the risk event, obviously, the elections in, in France. Um, and I've mentioned this uh, several times, and I mentioned it this week at, at the beginning of the week, but there is no good scenario for the French elections, right? Either there was going to be, there is going to be a, um, a Le Pen majority government, or it looks like there's going to be um, a hung parliament, right? Where you don't have a majority. And both scenarios, the market doesn't like. Although in the lead up, the fact that Le Pen isn't getting the majority or is unlikely to get the majority is seen as somehow the positive, right? So that's the narrative that I think is being spun to kind of justify and draw people in to going long on the euro. But if you consider in the UK, you have, you know, a st more of a stable government or you, with Labour, right? That's seen as a positive. So how can uh, a hung parliament for Europe be seen as positive? It can't, you know what I mean? And so I did post uh, some things in here as well, uh, which was here where is it one second earlier in the week right so anyway now the tip for september rate cuts right inflation has been coming down so that was some positive i say positive news but basically inflation news that fell right so euros only inflation fell in june and kept alive expectations that european central bank would be positioned to cut rates again in september so again they're cutting rates um uh, and here we go as well. It was saying here that, let me just get my pen, right? It says a hung parliament seems, oh, sorry, one second. It says a hung parliament. Let me get to change that. Yeah, a hung parliament seems the most likely and it may come sometime before, sorry, it may be sometime before it becomes clear on whether a government can be even be formed right so that's basically a coalition government so there's so much uncertainty regardless of what's happening right or what you know what the market and, and i guess the news is trying to kind of spin the narrative that because you know uh le pen won't get the majority or is unlikely to get a majority that that is somehow seen as positive for the euro right Nah, i don't i don't i don't buy that so um for me, I just think that it's a case of um, traders being drawn in. Yeah, so traders being drawn in. Yeah, to go long. We're already in the extreme on the um, on the RSI. You know, we're up into this supply zone. Uh, when we look at, like, for example, the monthly uh, time horizon, we've come up to these monthly highs as well. Everything is pointing to the downside, both from a risk sentiment perspective, from a fundamental perspective. And so as we head into the weekend, um, I think that the euro should want to be a sell, even if it pops up over the weekend. And let's say, it, you know, it clears everyone else out and it gaps up like it did um, here. I think it was, yeah, it was here. I think it gapped up on the euro dollar, but it, it completed that gap as well on the euro dollar. So anyone who did get short, I think it was that uh, stop hunt, right? There was a stop hunt on that euro dollar. Um, so it popped up over the weekend, stop hunt there, came back down, filled the unfair auction. That's what's known as an unfair auction. Filled it, completed it, and then now obviously it's gone higher. So I think it's just clearing out and drawing traders into going long against the dollar and against other currencies but ultimately i think we should want to roll over uh next week because as i said you don't have any kind of government right and so that is definitely going to be uh, a lot of uncertainty in france and therefore the euro so 
um i'm not changing my uh, my my bias not even slightly so yeah that's where we are with the euro so euro sells um swiss franc again more sells no reason to look to buy the uh the swiss franc there was an article in here that was talking about the intervention. Uh, it says here that the Swiss National Bank largely refrained from interventions to influence the franc in the first quarter as it depreciated against the dollar and the euro. And so um, basically it says that this suggests that Swiss officials didn't see much reason to steer the franc in either direction and insisted they were happy with the currency falling against major peers. So pardon me, the um, the Swiss National Bank uh, tend to try to influence, and, and central banks do anyway by buying bonds. So, for example, the, the Bank of Japan are doing the same thing, right? They're buying, you know, bonds to try to, um, uh, and selling bonds to try to in influence um, the uh, the currency and the, the, the valuation of the currency, right? And the Swiss National Bank do the same thing. Um, but what's what's um good is that actually i was i wouldn't say good it's not good or bad but what's interesting is that um they're not concerned with intervening right at the moment and so um if you're shorting the swiss franc to me that just basically says that they don't mind it going and de de devaluing even more before stepping in right so they're pretty neutral on the valuation of the swiss franc at the moment which is which is a good thing so um continue sales basically that's, that's that's what it means for me you don't have like an invisible hand that is you know uh that is trading against you do you know what i mean or even with you sometimes if you're on the right side of the, of the market then it, then it's brilliant right but let's say you want to get short but the but the Swiss National Bank are saying, well, no, we think that the Swiss franc is is too undervalued, right? You can't fight the Swiss National Bank because you know no matter how much you want to get short, if they're saying no, it's too cheap or too undervalued, and then they start you know intervening to strengthen the currency, regardless of what we think, you know that you just standing in front of a moving train, right? And so um for now then there's no intervening so they're letting the market just play out which is you know which is good for us or good for the shorts at the moment um so swiss the swiss franc is still a short the canadian dollar uh before i go into the canadian dollar actually matter of fact let's look at the swiss franc sorry let's go to the swiss franc um uh index looking at this from you know, uh, year to date, again, we're just, you know, since they've cut rates again, this has just been to the downside, right? So looking for pullbacks, if you can get one uh, on the Swiss franc, but it doesn't look like it. So, um, yeah, very nice. If you're in any Swiss trades, that's working out quite nice for you, or it should be. Uh, Addy says, dollar Swiss has pulled back to what looks like a strong uh, support resistance flip zone. I have no idea what a support resistance flip zone is. And an eight hour demand zone. Okay, um, try not to look at eight hour demand zones, look at daily demand zones. In terms of daily demand, and Swiss index might not be the best, right? So I think it's really about timing, Addy. So you've just had today some some bad news, I guess, uh, with the uh, with with the dollar, right? And I say bad news, but you know, uh, news that looks like it isn't is supporting a rate cut. But at the same time, what would be the reason to buy the Swiss franc? Right? Why would you why would you want to buy the Swiss franc? Is if you're buying a Swiss franc based off just purely off the fact that the dollar is going is getting weaker, right? Or potentially getting weaker, you might as well look to buy a strong currency against the dollar. Does that make sense? Because you know, I, I would rather trade more of a divergence where you've got strong versus weak. So, for example, the uh, the, the the Aussie dollar or the New Zealand dollar or um, even the pound dollar, right? 
although they may not present technical opportunities right now, um, shorting the, 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 the dollar against the Swiss franc is buy the oh okay buy 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 okay 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 no worries sorry i must have read it wrong uh four hours support and even then all right so even if you wanted to be a buyer even if you wanted to be a buyer of of the uh of the dollar swiss you still really should and it would be preferable or this is what i would do i would wait for at least a it for it to come down into a daily demand zone right or and i should say or but and also as well for the RSI to show that it's at least somewhere close to it being undervalued because you're still buying really at highs. So if you're looking at this as being the absolute low, yeah, and the absolute high, how much of a discount would you like to see? Personally, I want to see at least fair value, at least a minimum of fair value to try to look to trade. So if we take that high to that low, and look at an auction, right? We're still really, you're buying 80% highs. That's absolute, you know, expensive. You know, that's the uh, the premium. Yeah. And all prices have done is pull back 20%. Do I want to be a buyer here? No, not really. I'd rather look for a bit more fair value before looking at going long. Right, and I get it. Even if prices do, even if prices go higher, right, prices can go higher from here. But for me, I don't. I just don't like buying at highs. You know what I mean? I just don't. I, it's something that I just won't do. Now, could there be a case on a lower time frame to get involved in this again? Yes, there could. There could be some sort of stop hunt or a CPR. You know, somewhere around here. But if we're taking into account higher time frame analysis, right? To me, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good by any measure. I do want to see value or some sort of reading of fair value um, before looking at getting long. All right, even if, let's say, for example, we take this high, uh, higher, high, higher, low, right? So let's say, for example, we did this, we got a pullback and we got that. Yeah, so and then from, from that high to that higher low. Let's just move this here. All right. So then you can make you can make a case for buying in and around this area in terms of fair value. Yeah, you can. But even then, and I don't really want to get sidetracked too much off the fundamentals. I get I get into the technicals a bit later. But even then, even if you were looking at this level as a level to look for buy, first of all, again, you want to see. Is this a CPR zone? Is this a stop hunt? If it's not, then it's no trade. But let's just say you did want to be a buyer. Remember that your risk reward, you definitely want to have a decent enough risk reward before you get involved in this trade, meaning that if you're looking to buy there, your stop loss needs to be below that wick and you haven't got enough upside potential before you even make a one-to-one. -one. So. Um, you want to see, if you're going to buy anywhere, you definitely want to still see prices come down to around this area before looking at going long. But anyways, that's what I would say. That's what I would say with that. Um, but when it comes to the Canadian dollar uh, or the Swiss franc, I should say, um, for me, um, yeah, it's still about sales. And um, I'm still in the New Zealand Swiss at the moment. I took profit on the Aussie Swiss yesterday which actually would end up going higher so um let's see anyways uh the cad so for me the canadian dollar i did take a trade on the canadian dollar and i bought the canadian dollar against the euro um but i ended up getting the i was saying a, a bit stopped out on the new zealand um on the new zealand cad only two positions i man i managed to get one position as a, as a win so that ended up being a break-even trade but in terms of the fundamentals i think and i've read that the um the rate cut may start in um in september rather than july and it says here canada's economic growth appears to be decelerating after a strong start to the second quarter keeping bank of canada on track to cut rates 
uh, further this year. This is the only GDP report before the bank's next rate decision on July the 24th. The major um, the, ma the majority of economists in a Bloomberg survey expect policymakers to hold borrowing costs steady at that meeting before easing again in September. And traders in overnight swaps put the odds of a July cut at about a third. So um, for me, it doesn't, I think the Canadian dollar can be a buy and it's the reason why I've put it as an auction. So there's reasons to sell the Canadian dollar, but there's also reasons to buy the Canadian dollar. So I think in the short term, I think the CAD um, uh, can be a buy. Now, you might be asking, well, why did you buy against the New Zealand dollar is because at the end of the day, the New Zealand dollar is still looking to cut rates next year and the Canadian dollar looking to cut rates this year. So overall, the, the the New Zealand CAD should uh, should appreciate that that currency pair should go higher, so um, it's not necessarily the best trade in the world now. I don't think, but um, in terms of divergences um, and timing, but I do think that the uh, the Canadian dollar can be a bit more of a buy, especially against the euro um, and the euro obviously going through its um, its problems. So I, I have I am in the Euro CAD um, for now as well. So reasons to buy, reasons to sell. But um, I think if they hold rates uh, in July, then um, that should actually be positive for the Canadian dollar. And I think that they will. Um, and looking at the CAD overall, looking at the CAD, looking at the CAD index. So the CAD index, looking at the daily. Yeah, we got a bit of a pullback on the CAD. This is the reason why I bought, although it wasn't necessarily in the absolute bargain area, um, there was a bit of a pullback here. And so the euro, that was on the, uh, on the Monday, yeah. So the Monday, um, the euro was expensive. Right, so that was expensive, and also as well the euro, the euro uh, CAD. Right, was in the RSI extreme on Monday as well. So there was some. Um, there was definitely reasons to look for short trades in that supply zone. Right, so it came to the supply, nice confluence, and so you can see that I'm in one position. I've got a couple of other positions. Uh, potentially to get triggered so in that one so that's the reason why i'm short right heading into the weekend but overall um i think the cad you can look for reasons to buy or sell but i think i'm leaning towards probably a bit more of a buy on the canadian dollar um and australian dollar the australian dollar is the king at the moment um nothing but um hawkish sentiment and the fact that um they're really the only central bank uh, and that the news is reporting that there could be a potential hike, you know, coming at the coming at the next, uh, maybe over the next maybe meetings or so, two meetings. So rising inflation and low unemployment gives reason for market to speculate on potential rate hikes. Risk sentiments around China recovery not weighing on the AUD at the moment. And um, the RBA meets on the August the 5th and 6th with some economists predicting the central bank may tighten policy further to take the benchmark to 4.6%, a level not seen since, since October 2011. The board has placed a high bar to raising rates again uh, while saying that further tightening cannot be ruled out. The consensus among economists so far is still that the RBA will hold rates at 3 point, uh, sorry, 4.35% this year, though some believe a hike uh, in August cannot be ruled out if second quarter inflation due uh, July the 31st surprises to the upside. So it's basically at the moment with the Australian dollar by the rumor, right? So by the rumor, you know, you're seeing just the Australian dollar keep making higher highs, higher highs. And um, and yeah, so there's really no reason to 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 sell the uh, the Australian dollar at the moment. I do think there probably might be an opportunity if inflation does come down. Right. So if inflation comes uh, in as maybe below uh, forecast, I think then we, we might start to see a new auction. Do you know what I mean? A new range when it comes to 
the um, the Australian dollar, right? But I don't think it's going to, you know, totally reverse all the way down here or anything like that. I just think that there's going to just be a new auction um, in terms of uh, the valuation of the Australian dollar. Because ultimately, even if they hold in, um, in August, uh, again, they're going to be one of the last central banks to cut rates. So let's see. So let's see what happens with the Australian dollar. But nothing really changed uh, for the Auss Aussie. Still buy bias based on late cut uh, potential rate hikes. So, um, yeah, looking at that and looking at the uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and looking at the rankings. And um, for those of you that are new, again, and who are probably watching this, um, it, I've got obviously the the course kind of explains this, but to do like a quick summary on this is is typically what you want to do is look for is look for the biggest divergences, right? Meaning that number one is uh, is normally the uh, should be the strongest uh, currency against eight, which is normally the weakest, right? Based on the data that we're comparing. Now that isn't always the case. That's not always going to be the case because. Um, currencies move in cycles because if it was always the case then it means that united states would always remain number one and switzerland would never you know never appreciate against the united states which is um a bit nonsensical right so every dog has its day right there's going to be a time where the dollar is going to be the the, the weakest right and maybe switzerland might actually be uh, one of the top currencies but what we look for is actually and what we look at is the currency value cycle and what the um what the, uh, the 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 spreadsheet does it helps us first of all at least have a base in terms of you know a starting point but also as well um it helps us to to understand where we are in terms of the currency cycle so if we're for example uh you know the the united states right are we on this end of the cycle right in terms of continued currency appreciation are we potentially heading into uh, maybe a bit of an auction where you know you can look to put where we don't necessarily get massive appreciation but we don't get massive devaluation either right of the of the dollar or anything that's ranked number one two or three or are we actually on this end of the cycle where uh currencies you know uh potentially are going through a bit of an economic decline and um are looking at currency devaluation so there are times where you know, we're looking for divergences, of course. So we're looking to trade and buy currencies that are ranked one, two, or three. And we're looking to sell currencies that are six, seven, and eights. But also as well, due to our fundamental analysis, we need to be aware when currencies that are actually ranked one, two, or three may be actually devaluing. And in fact, currencies that are ranked six, seven, or eight, yeah, are actually revaluing. Right, they could actually be getting uh, stronger and appreciating, yeah. So, um, so yeah, that is really what we're figuring out, and this is what you know the, the, the spreadsheet allows us to do. Especially when we look at, like, for example, the previous position, we can see, for example, the United States has kind of remained one. Um, the United Kingdom has slowly, from the previous position, which was four went to three so it's kind of appreciated or it should have appreciated a bit um switzerland has gone from seven for example to now eight so it's devalued against you know everything else uh new zealand has weakened a little bit gone from three to four japan has gone from uh japan has gone from six to seven for example so you can kind of see what the previous positions were and where the uh the, i guess the direction of travel potentially right so um so ultimately yeah that's what we use and this is what we use for the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet and it just measures you know the main economic data points and then from that we can then determine where um you know what what currency pairs we want to trade right so if i for example say that i think that the um that on the appreciation side is for example definitely the australian dollar which is rank number two, yeah, rank number two. I think the 
the dollar is probably somewhere around here. Uh, number three was the pound. I think the pound probably somewhere around here as well. Right. We can look for reasons to buy or sell. Don't think a massive appreciation. Not like the Australian dollar anyway. Um, I think the New Zealand dollar is probably likely on this edge as well, on this side of things. So number four, I think is probably heading up that way. Number five is the Canadian dollar. And I think the Canadian dollar is probably again somewhere around here. Right. You can look for buyers or sells. Um, number six is the euro. I definitely think it's on this end of the cycle. All right. Number seven is the Japanese yen. And again, I think it's on this end of the cycle. And number eight is the uh, Swiss franc. So I definitely think it's continuing devaluation, right? Doesn't mean it's going to devalue every single day or even every single week. Like we've seen, for example, the euro, right? The euro is appreciated, but I don't look at, I'm not looking to trade every single day, right? I'm looking for levels of, you know, obviously supply, right? And then as prices come up, if that takes a week or two, then brilliant, excellent. I don't care whether, you know, the, the, it, it appreciated in terms of like my trading. I'm just looking at levels where I can look for short trades. In fact, I want it to appreciate and, you know, markets never move in a straight line anyway. So just because I'm looking at a devaluation on the euro or maybe the yen or maybe the Swiss franc, what I'm not saying is that it's going to continue to go down. I know you guys know this, but just in case anyone's watching this um, and thinks that that's not really the intention. So I'm just looking for pullbacks where I can look for short trades to get short. And the same thing, for example, with long trades. You can be long on the Australian dollar, but over the next week or two, the Australian dollar could pull back. Does that mean that I'm going to change my 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 bias on the, on the uh, Australian dollar because price is coming down? No. What I want to see if a sustained change for me to change my bias would mean a change in the fundamentals. So prices pull back in an uptrend, prices pull back in a downtrend. So this could just be a nice buying opportunity to buy for cheaper before prices go higher, right? So that's really what I'm saying um, when I say I'm long and I'm short, not necessarily looking at things like day trades and short, you know, five minute price charts. I'm looking at the bigger picture. So with that being said, with the, um, with the, uh, my bias is on the pairs. Again, my bias would be to buy the New Zealand dollar against the yen. So my bias is to the long side. New Euro New Zealand, I'm short. So I'm in that trade already. So that's now break even trade. Actually, it's a profitable trade at the moment. Um, the pound New Zealand was on the watch list. And I think it's mainly just due to the fact that the pound are going to be cutting rates this year, whereas the RBNZ are not, right? So the Bank of England are cutting rates, not the pound, but the Bank of England are cutting rates, but the RBNZ are not. So you can look towards pullbacks on that for potential short, if that's what you want to do. Uh, New Zealand Swiss, of course, long, I'm in that trade. Uh, dollar, um, dollar yen really should be more of a long on pullbacks the reason why i put it on the watch list was more to do with potential intervention but it really should be a long um overall euro dollar short and i think i continue to look for short trades on that um heading into uh the weekend as i said because i think the political turmoil should weigh more on the euro than it does the dollar uh, pound dollar, nope, I'm not looking to trade that. Aussie yen should be a long trade. Dollar Swiss should be a long trade. Um, Euro Aussie should be a short trade. Pound Aussie, again, watch this based really based on the divergence between the central banks. So the Bank of England will be cutting way before the Australian dollar. You know, Australian dollar really the only ones that are, apart from the Japanese yen as well are, that are looking to potentially high crates so that should really be more of a long trade if you want to get involved in that uh new zealand cad was a long and i'm going to put that more on a watch list now although i definitely am inclined to more buy the uh, new zealand dollar it's not necessarily the strongest trade in the short term short term but technically i like it and i'm gonna i might get back in on that as well to try and go long on that new zealand dollar um because there are divergences 
um, on that. So I might get back in on that. Uh, if I see an entry, Aussie Swiss, of course, long on pullbacks. CAD Yen, uh, long on pullback if you're looking to buy the CAD. Um, Euro CAD should be more of a short. Um, and I think, uh, well, I am in that at the moment but i think that the again the euro should want to devalue at some point uh dollar cad should be more of a long but although now i do think mm, if they're going to cut in september i think i'll probably more put that potentially on maybe the watch list and when i say they i mean um the, the bank of canada if they like to cut in september then the ups, I think the upside or downside to the dollar CAD would likely to potentially look to, to range, I think, or auction um, on that currency pair. Um, Aussie, New Zealand, I'm going to stay out of that for now, although the edge is with, I think, the Australian dollar. The pound CAD, I'm going to stay out of that as well. CAD Swiss, if you want to be a buyer of the CAD, it should be against the Swiss franc as well. Aussie CAD should be more of a long trade on pullbacks uh pound swiss should be a long trade swiss yen not trying to buy that yen at the moment um euro swiss in fact if you're looking to buy the swiss on risk events then it should be against the euro but i'm going to stay out of that i think there are better trades out there new zealand dollar um, is a decent buy against the US dollar if you think the US dollar is going to get weaker and you want to short the dollar that would be a currency I would short it against same thing as the Australian dollar but I'm not looking to um, go that route um, at the moment you're better off probably just buying maybe gold gold or silver against the dollar if you think you're gonna if you want to um, short the dollar um, pound yen should really be a buy uh, euro yen uh, I think I'm going to, I'm not trading it. I'm not going to trade that because that yen has just been unreliable. So it, it should, it is on the watch list, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with it anymore. And Euro pound should be more of a short. So that is where we are. So Sid, uh, you got in at pound Aussie short Spencer. Okay. Okay. I'll have a look at that later. Um, Sid says, question about technical analysis. Please open the dollar Swiss chart. You'll see the price dropped to somewhere near fair value, but bounced back. This is not the best location. It is in the fair value or expensive range yet, but the price still bounced back. The RSI was also quite low in spite of the fact, in spite of the fact that the price is not best located what is the best strategy to take advantage of a move like this sometimes you just can't take advantage of certain moves right there's no point in trying to take advantage of, of of a move um until it really kind of gives you what you want to see so um i think obviously ade was talking about the same thing so um for me even if it came down to even though it's come down to fair value um we haven't really got fair value on the rsi also as well uh, the the dollar on the daily we're coming down to a cheaper end 